are continuing with one dimensional motion in class practice worksheet. We're working on 2D, number 9 and 10. So on number 9, it says a car starts with an initial speed of 6.6, .6, so an initial velocity is 6.60 meters per second. Accelerates at a uniform rate. So my acceleration is 0 0.92 meters per second squared, and my time is 3.6 seconds. Find the final velocity and the displacement. So we're looking for two separate things on this one uh, from the car during this time. So let's just start with final velocity since that's what they asked us for. We have initial, acceleration, and time. And if we look over here at our worksheet, a lot of these have final velocity. Three of them do. This one has initial velocity, acceleration, and time, and it's solved for final velocity, so that one's amazing. It works perfectly. So what we're going to use is initial velocity plus acceleration times time. And that's just our basic acceleration equation, change in velocity over time. So let's solve this guy. So final velocity is initial velocity of 6.6 .6 meters per second. We're going to add that to the acceleration of 0.92 meters per second squared times the time of 3.6 seconds. And then it's just cranking it through our calculator here. So we have our, uh, what is it, 6.6 .6 plus 0.92 times 3.6. And we end up with 9.9 .9 meters per second. Okay? Because right, the seconds cancel ways out. We have meters per second and meters per second. And we're done with that. And now we're looking for a change in position. Well, now we have final velocity along with these other things. So we could use quite a few different equations. Okay? So we can look at our change in position. We could use any one of these things up here. Um, we have a final and initial velocity. We also have an acceleration. So we could really use... Any of these, we could use this one or this one. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and use this. I'm going to do them both, actually, just to show that they both will work. So first, we're going to say that delta x is equal to the 1 half times vf plus vi times t. And now we're going to put those in there. Now, remember, we rounded this off a little bit with 9.912. Okay, so because we're rounding things off, our answers for both of these might not be exact, but they should be pretty darn close. So we're going to 9.9. .9. I'm going to leave off the units just so we can see the numbers a little better. Initial velocity is 6.6, .6, and my time was 3.6. So we're going to do 9.9 .9 plus 6.6. .6. We're going to divide that by 2, and then we're going to multiply it by 3.6, and we get 29.7. Okay, and we're looking for a position, and we ended up in meters. Um, if we put the units, we would see that. And the other one, we put delta x, and we had this other equation for delta x, which we think we had all the information. This is the information we had initially. Velocity, initial, acceleration, and time. Velocity, initial, acceleration, and time. So let's try that one. So it's vit plus one-half at squared. Okay, we're just going to punch our numbers in there. So let's uh, write them in. So velocity initial was the 6.6. .6. We're going to multiply that by the 3.6 seconds for time. We're going to add that to 1 half times the 0.92 for acceleration times the 3.6 seconds squared. Okay, so first we have 6.6 .6 times 3.6. Okay, then we're going to add that to 0.5 times 0.92 times 3.6 squared. And look at that, we get 29.7. Okay, now it's off a little, there's that 0 0.0216 extra, but remember we rounded off our 9.9 .9 a little bit, and so that's where things end up being just a little bit different, but 29.7 meters, exactly the same thing both times. So it really doesn't matter which one we use. Actually, I'm going to do a quick little aside here. If we take our initial equation here, right, we had this uh, velocity final is vi plus at. So if I take this equation, vf equals vi plus at, and we take this other equation, that delta x equals the one-half vf plus vi times t, and we combine those. So I'm going to put this vf into there. So we say delta x equals one-half times vi plus at plus vi times t. And I rework this, so there's two VIs in there. So we have one half 
times 2vi plus at times t. Now if we multiply through by the half, we're just going to get vi here, which is half times 2, plus 1 half at. This is all still multiplied by the t. Now we multiply through by the t, and we get vi t plus 1 half at squared. Look at that. That's that equation. And that's really all we did. And that's all we did here. We solved for vf, and then we used that equation to solve for my distance. We don't have to do that middle step. I just made you do it on these equation, just so you'd kind of see that. But we could jump right to this equation because it's just those two equations combined already. All right? So let's look at number 10. I bet number 10 is almost the same. Let me just flip it over so we can see the number here. Number 10, car starts from rest. If it's starting from rest, my initial velocity is going to be zero. Travels for five seconds, so my time is five seconds. With a uniform acceleration of negative, don't forget the negative, that, what's negative mean? Hopefully no, that means we're just going the opposite direction. So we're accelerating, it looks like we're braking or slowing down. What is the final velocity? And then how far does it travel? So we're doing exactly what we just did. Okay, so final velocity is equal to um, initial velocity plus at. So we're just going to plug those in. Initial velocity is just zero, isn't it? So we can kind of ignore that and just say final velocity is acceleration times time, which is going to be the negative 1.5 times the 5, and that should be 7.5, but let's just make sure. And it's negative 7.5 meters per second. So that's my final velocity. My change in position, we're going to use the... Um, Let's use the VIT plus one half AT squared. That's the one, we're, the new one we're trying to learn. So let's plug that. My initial velocity again is zero. So zero times anything is zero. So we can again ignore that, just like we ignored it up here. And we could just say this is one half AT squared, which is one half times negative 1.5 times my five squared. Doesn't seem like all that would work out the same, but let's see if it does. Okay, and see if we get four position. Uh, so we have 0.5 times negative 1.5 times 5 squared. And we get negative 18.75. And that is my change in position in meters. Okay. Now we could do it the other way. If you want to try it, see if we get the same. I don't mind. I'm willing to do. So it's VF plus VI times T. Right, that was our other delta x. Again, this is zero. So this is just one half times the final velocity, which was negative 7.5 meters per second, times the time of five seconds. Let's see if that works out. So 0 0.5 times negative 7.5 times five. And look at that. Didn't matter which way we did it. We got the exact same number. All right, and that is it. We will continue and do another video for the next section.